Today's episode is going to be about the alpha in heels. Timestamps in description. Could somebody please make it make sense? Hey everybody, welcome to A Pop of Culture. I am your host, the Esoteric and Facetious, and this is my video essay podcast, A Pop of Culture, where I speak on pop culture, social justice, and the human experience from a blah, 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 black, blah, 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 perspective. Everything, and I mean everything I say should be taken with a grain of salt, as I'm simply a recent college grad with access to recording device and the internet. If you disagree with anything I say, let's have a civil conversation in the comment section below. With that being said, I want to get into the topic of this video, which is the alpha and heels. Before I do that, I want to advertise my cover channel. I have a cover channel, Pop of Culture Sings, where I sing throwback R&B, contemporary R&B, pop music, whatever I'm feeling, whatever you're feeling. So if you want to be down like Brandy, if you're down with the click RP Aaliyah, definitely feel free to check that channel out. With that being said, let's get into the topic of this video, which is the alpha and heels. If you did not see the picture online, there was a picture that surfaced online of a black male member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated who decided to not only don his Alpha Phi Alpha stole, but also a pair of high heeled shoes and also had his nails done and was wearing what appeared to be a woman's suit. This caused a lot of controversy because of course, there is a certain image that we all have associated with black Greek men. And this image of him in this feminine attire was what many felt was in direct opposition with the image of what a black Greek man is. Now, I wanna provide some context. As I mentioned in the intro, I'm a recent college grad. And one of the things I want to illustrate to y'all is the importance of graduation photos these days. Now, if you're somebody who is a little bit older, if you don't have kids, if you're not somebody who has nieces or nephews, prom photos have changed a lot. It's not just, okay, let me get a picture, like snap a quick pic before you know you and your date go off to prom. It's the whole thing. People get photographers, people get professional makeup artists, you know. Everybody has to have everything on point. You know, the dress has to be perfect, The Dates suit has to be perfect, his hair has to be together, everything has to be together because a lot of these kids, these high school kids want to get reposted on these big prom pages, they want to get the likes, they want to get the engagement, it's a big deal. And graduation photos are becoming the new prom pictures. People are paying 100, 125, 175 an hour. They're getting multiple locations of photos, they're getting outfit changes, they're buying suits and dresses like formal dresses for these photos and this is a big deal and i think a lot of this has to do with first and foremost the fact that last year like in the heat of the pandemic a lot of people didn't get graduation ceremonies and also too with people graduating in a pandemic things have changed a lot you know there was a lot of virtual classes or a lot of changes to how campus looked i know a lot of people who didn't even get to go to their university it was all virtual so a lot of people are not only just excited for the fact that they graduated, but they graduated and were still able to celebrate in very uncertain times. And not only that, but with the rising expenses of college, a lot of people are going to be paying back their degree for a very long time. So they want to pull out all the stops to celebrate. And this is exactly what I feel this young man did. He clearly felt the most comfortable and confident in this attire, and that's why he wore it. Where the problem or concern comes about is the fact that he was wearing his Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated stole. Because he was wearing the stole, he was affiliating himself with the Alpha Phi Alpha brand. And the concern that comes about is there's a certain image that comes with somebody being a part of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity. Just like my channel has a brand, I have a personal brand. My personal brand is everything I say I do, I affiliate myself with, everything I support, things of that nature. Did he earn the right to wear the paraphernalia? Yes, however, him wearing the paraphernalia while doing something that's not in line with the image that the fraternity has put out there can be a conflict of interest. Just like if somebody committed a mass murder with 
Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. Now to be fair, committing a mass murder and wearing feminine attire are not the same thing. But the truth remains, there are certain things that you can do when affiliated with the group or brand that are going to impact the way that that group or brand is perceived whether you like it or not. One example of this is Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, who is our current vice president, is a AKA. And now, because she has had this great accomplishment of attaining this office, now that's a selling point to being an AKA, that they have someone in the White House. This is how affiliations with brands work and with branding and public image you and your actions can either positively or negatively impact the way that the group is viewed. One of the things that people who are not involved in Greek life often ask is, why do people sign up for this? Why are you signing up to be beaten and tormented and things of that nature? And even though hazing by the books is technically illegal, we all know that some things still happen. So why would people sign up for this? Why would people sign up to be ridiculed, to be beaten, to be treated negatively? A lot of people say, you know, why would you want to be friends with the people who just, you know, hazed you? And the reality is because of the brand, because of the reputation that, you know, being an alpha has, being a cap has, being an AKA has, people want that reputation. People want to be affiliated with this group. And this image is what makes people want to join. There are so many black men and black women who will pick their college specifically because it has the active Greek life presence. It's a selling point at many universities. And the reason the branding works is because when people see this branding, when they see this image that is presented by these organizations, they want to be like these people. Like if your dad was an alpha and you want to be an alpha. There is a reason why you want to follow in his footsteps. So why do I say all this? I say all this because there's a certain brand, there's a certain image that comes with being a member of a Black Greek letter organization. And not just a Black Greek letter organization, but a member of a lot of groups, a lot of different things. One of the examples that I thought of in my head is with Destiny's Child, you know, DC3, speaking specifically to the final iteration, the final lineup of Beyonce Knowles, Michelle Williams, and Kelly Rowland. There was a certain image that these women had. They could be played on the radio station. They could be performing at the Teen Nick Awards or the Kids' Choice Awards. They could be affiliated with Disney Channel. And all of this was because they had a brand where it was deemed appropriate that they could be in front of all of these audiences because of what they presented. And this is not just something that happens. It's often marketing. It's often having people in your team, people in your camp who are making sure that you're not doing things that would limit your opportunities. And it's also you having the self-awareness to understand, hey, this is a brand or brand that I'm affiliated with. This is my image and this is how I need to conduct myself. Now, if in the heat of DC3's popularity, there was a photo of Michelle Williams that service of her snorting crack, that would likely impact the group and their opportunities because now you can't go and get Kids' Choice Awards because what kind of example are you setting in a PR sense? If you're around my age, you may remember Zoe 101. Zoe 101 was a show that was created by Dan Schneider that starred Jamie Lynn Spears with her and her friends at PCA, which was a boarding school, and it just showed their various misadventures. However, when Jamie Lynn Spears became pregnant as a teenager, this changed the brand of her, and because she was affiliated with the show, it changed the show, and they ultimately decided we can't have this show running because, you know, she's a teen mother, and this is not something we may want to promote to our audiences. Did Jamie Lynn Spears' acting change when she got pregnant? No, she was still the same person. She was still able to act. She was still able to perform just as well as she was before. But because her brand shifted, because her image had shifted, she was no longer able to be on the show. The show was no longer a thing because it was incompatible with Nickelodeon's brand. And the thing that we're going to discuss today is whether this alpha was acting in line with the brand or the group image of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. 
One thing that I would like to note is that Black Greek letter organizations are generally marketed towards mainstream Black folks. This would mean most often Christian Black American people who are cisgender heterosexual people who fit within the norms of what is expected of a Black man or a Black woman. These are going to be people who most often affirm gender roles and stereotypes. That's not to say that everyone in these organizations is like that and that there aren't atheists or black LGBT people there. There are several black LGBT people in these organizations and not just closeted people, but out and proud people. There are people who have different belief systems or who are atheists. It's all types of people in there. However, what Black Greek letter organizations are known for, generally speaking, is Black men and Black women who are typically Christian, cisgender, heterosexual, who fall within the norms of what is expected of Black men and Black women in society. Why does this matter? While anyone can apply to be a part of a Black Greek letter organization, there are certain people who are going to fit the mold of what a stereotypical member looks like. So where does the conflict come about? The conflict comes about with the fact that the Alpha in Heels has an image or branding that is very different from the image or branding of the stereotypical Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity member. So while he should be able to express himself freely as he sees fit, when he wears something like a stole that ties him to the fraternity, this can become a conflict of interest because now a fraternity that's been around for over a century, now their branding and image changes. Now to be fair, one person, one individual is not likely going to be able to change the image permanently of a group that has existed way longer than them, that has thousands of members. But I do think there is this weird thing with us as people, as human beings, where we will associate one thing or one incident that happens because of one individual with an entire group or company. This is like when people hear that one employee from a one franchise of a fast food company has done something sick with the food, and they say, I never want to go to that restaurant again, even if they live on the other side of the country and even if this was a one-time incident. We as people can tend to take one individual's actions and tie them to the entire group. In my opinion, though the young man was doing nothing wrong by expressing himself in the way that he saw fit, I think there is a conflict of interest there because the way that he presented himself is, in my opinion, in conflict with the demographic of black men that people want in Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. You have to remember, these organizations have been in place for a very long time, and part of the way that these organizations survive, as far as I know, as a non-Greek person, is through continually getting members, continually getting people who join and who pay dues. And the reality is, if the reputation of the alphas is that they're not cool, less people may join. And that's the thing. They have to continually get new members in order to stay alive. And of course, there's gonna be legacies. There's always gonna be people who wanna be Greek. This one picture isn't gonna change that. But I do think pictures like this, if more and more alpha men decided to take pictures of themselves at graduation in like feminine attire, the problem of being a part of a brand is there is that discrepancy of individual versus brand. So if a bunch of alphas decided when they graduate, which is not likely, but if they did decide, okay, we're all gonna wear, I don't know, frilly skirts with our Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated um, stole, the problem is, even though they're individuals doing this, they are linked with the brand. In my opinion, there is this unbreakable link between you and your, the brand or the things you're affiliated with. So I feel like that is, this is a valid point of when people do things as individuals that are, while also affiliating themselves with a bigger brand, it can have an impact and if other people started doing this, this could impact the image 
of the fraternity and it could change the rate at which people want to apply to the fraternity and become a member. Now let's address the elephant in the room, homophobia. The reason why this picture got so much traction and conversation is because I feel a lot of black Greek men felt threatened by this image. And why is that? I feel like a, there is a certain reputation that comes with being a black Greek man. But I feel like there's also a certain image socially. If a black woman is scrolling through a dating app, a lot of times black women, if they see, oh, he's an alpha man, oh, he's a kappa, there's a certain association that comes with that. And I feel like with this man expressing himself in a different way, in a feminine way, that in some people's mind changes the way that they are also perceived. And I think some of that homophobia also just comes from we as black men are socialized to perform in a certain way, in this like hyper-masculine way. And in my opinion, this black man dressing in this feminine way is in complete opposition with the way that a lot of black men are wired to perform and perform their masculinity. And I feel like that's where this friction comes about. And when I say wired, I don't mean black men inherently are like overtly masculine men, but that's the way that a lot of black men are raised to perform. Most black men are not gonna care if a stranger does something that's feminine or deemed gay, but a lot of black men who are homophobic they're going to care if it's associated with them. And so I feel like the reason why some of these black Greek men are so upset about this alpha man dressing in this feminine way is because now his femininity is being linked to them. And with a lot of these Greek men, these black Greek men, their fraternity is something that gives them a lot of pride. It becomes a part of their identity, you know? Whenever they see their brothers, they're gonna, you know, do something that shows that they're a part of the same group. Whenever they see other Greek people, they're gonna do things that show that they're all members of the same group. It's something that gives them a lot of pride. So for this black man to change that or to, for him, he didn't necessarily actively change that, but by him existing as the person he is and expressing himself authentically, the individual and the brand are intrinsically linked. So. Some of these black men are feeling like this aspect of their identity that they feel so proud of is being linked to something that they don't want to be associated with. Now, to be fair, maybe this should be a lesson to cisgender heterosexual black men in Greek organizations that being Greek and being a Greek man can extend beyond traditional male gender stereotypes. And this makes me wonder what's going to come of this in the future. Are chapters going to start monitoring people's graduation photos, which I hope is not the case. This could be a new opportunity for Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. They could co-sign this photo and say, hey, he's a member of our fraternity. He has graduated and this is how he wants to express himself. This is something we're proud of. We're proud that we have members who are of different backgrounds, different identities, et cetera, et cetera. And they could use this as a way to encourage people of different backgrounds to apply to the group. For example, in the past, maybe black LGBT people, people may realize, hey, these people are productive members of our community. These people are productive members of our society. And we want to have members who are doing great things and we don't want to make these people feel like they're not welcome. However, this could also be a conflict of interest because, as I said, I feel like black Greek letter organizations are open to anybody to apply to and you can apply to them if you're not, quote unquote, the mainstream. But if they want to continue marketing to that demographic, I feel like they may not want to co-sign this person, even if the higher ups don't have an issue with this because it may be in conflict with the brand and the image that they've already put out for so long. Now, lastly, I want to give credit where credit is due. I want to give credit to this man in heels for the fact that he is living his truth and embracing his identity. One of the unspoken truths of Black Greek life is the fact that there are a lot of closeted Black women. I use queer as an umbrella term for LGBT identities. 
I know the word has a long history, so not everyone feels comfortable using it in that way. So if you don't feel comfortable using the word, I understand. But going back to what I was saying, black queer men, there are a lot of black women who have been a part of Greek life, who have been outwardly homophobic because they have been repressing their own identity. They, because of the hyper-masculinity present in a lot of these black Greek letter organizations, there are a lot of black queer men who are living double lives. They're dishonest to their partners. They're out here making people their best kept secret and things of that sort. So I give credit to all the black out Greek people because I know there's so many people out there who are living double lives and not living their truth. And there's a difference between just not being out and not being ready and not living in your truth and having an impact on other people's lives. If you're just not ready to come out, then that's only really impacting you because you're the person who is holding that in. If you're somebody who is living a double life and you're having one partner of the opposite sex, but you're also engaging with people of the same sex in potentially bringing things to that partner because you're not being safe and you're not being honest with them, that's an issue. If you're making somebody your best kept secret, you're not wanting to be seen out with them, if you're only wanting to hang out with them when it's dark outside and you're not actually allowing them to be in a real relationship and have the love that they deserve and you're only providing them the love that you feel comfortable giving them because you don't want to be out as an LGBT person, that's an issue. And why I bring that up is because, like I said, the hypermasculinity in these Black Greek groups can, in my opinion, breed a lot of this negative behavior where people don't feel like they can be themselves. So I give credit to this gentleman and other out Greek people because they are opening the door for people who are Greek to not feel like they can't be themselves. And I love seeing these events. There's a lot of Black Pride events where there are Black Greek lunches and dinners where people network and people can wear their paraphernalia. And I think that that shows that there is a lot of progress that is happening. To be fair, some of you in the comments may say things like, well, my chapter didn't do this or my chapter didn't do that. I'm just speaking generally of things I've heard. Like I said, maybe the Greek group don't co-sign this photo because maybe they feel like that's too big of a step now, but hopefully, you know, over the years, maybe they can, you know, start maybe participating in Pride events or just making it more and more apparent to people that they are welcome. That way, people can feel like I can be myself and I can also be a part of this group. So then they don't feel like they have to lead these double lives that not only negatively impact themselves, but other people as well. I think that more widespread acceptance by the Divine Nine of LGBT identities is going to have a good impact on them as a whole because I feel like there's a lot of this don't ask, don't tell culture within these black Greek letter organizations. I know at my university, there were a lot of people who were involved in these organizations, but they weren't necessarily out all the way. They were people where if you knew, you knew, but like I said, don't ask, don't tell. Overall, I think that this photo brought forth a lot of interesting conversation regarding brand versus individual, public image of the brand versus individual, and also just homophobia within Black culture. And what can I take from this situation? What I can take from this situation is whatever groups I become affiliated with as I grow my brand, I need to be aware of those groups and I need to be aware, hey, is this thing that I'm doing, is this thing I'm posting, is this thing I'm saying in line with that brand? Because we've seen a lot of people in recent years, months, days, etc., lose opportunities because they have done things that are not in line with the groups that they've aligned themselves with. So this is a learning lesson for me as someone who's growing my brand. And this should be a learning lesson for any of y'all as y'all interact in your careers and in your daily life. Just consider what is my brand? Like what are my brand, what's my brand? What are the brands I'm affiliated with? And what would this look like with my brand? And I think also it's just important to see 
how do I want to express myself? And I think that's a choice. I think he made a choice to express himself in the way he saw fit. Obviously, he got scrutiny, but he still graduated. And as far as I know, he's still a member. So even if he received some negative reactions online, overall, he's still winning. And I'm going to tell you this. If he did this and he wore this feminine attire, I... I'm going to tell you now, he's probably already experienced a lot of these negative evaluations throughout his life. A lot of black feminine queer men build up a resilience to judgment and negativity and homophobia because they deal with it their entire lives. Obviously, no one should be treated badly or face adverse treatment, but like I said, people, this is not the first time that he's likely gone through this. And I will say this, when people choose to present themselves in these types of ways, they know that this is the reaction some people are going to give, but they want to express themselves in this way in spite of that. I think my takeaways from this video are just to be aware of the image I'm putting out in relation to the brands, the groups, the entities that I'm representing. And also, I just think this story just shows me it's very powerful to live in your truth because... People said all they wanted to say about him, but he's still doing him. He's existing as a person he wants to exist as, and I think that's a powerful thing for a black LGBT person, or any person for that matter, to do in this life. With that being said, thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Love y'all. Bye-bye. So much for watching share your thoughts below like this video if you like this video if you made it to this point in the video comment a thumbs up emoji below or a, a still here if you are still here subscribe if you want to see more and make sure to hit that bell so you're the first to know when i upload new content i upload new content every week and if you're enjoying yourself and why wouldn't you be enjoying yourself to the left there's a playlist of all my video essay and podcasts i have 24 in counting and the center is a button to subscribe if you just haven't had a chance to subscribe and you would like to and to the right is a playlist of all of my covers and parodies so if you are wanting to check those out feel free to do so and if you want to support me if you want to support the show first and foremost a non-financial way you can support is just through sharing this video I can make the thumbnails, I can, you know, make the titles, I can do the tags and do keyword research. One of the best ways that I can grow my brand is through y'all sharing this content with other people who like this type of content because I nor you can control the algorithm, but I can control the quality of the content I make and y'all can, if you enjoy the content, share with people who can like it. So that way, you know, if y'all are feeling it, it's getting put out there, whether, you know, the algorithm favors it or not somebody's gonna see it because you resonated with it and you resonated with me and now you're sharing it with other people so if that's a non-financial way you can support the channel and if you do want to support this channel financially my cash app is linked in the description of this video you know i'm trying to you know upgrade my production quality and just you know keep growing and growing and expanding and you know doing bigger and better so if you want to help and support that vision feel free to do so all those who donate to the channel will be featured in the credits of all of my videos on both of my channels thanks so much for watching love you all bye bye see you next time